and welcome back. The headline on the Montgomery County Media website summed it up pretty well. The dysfunction about the dysfunction in our county council when it, when it comes to transportation. The headline read, council adopts I-270 plan without definite funding commitments. Now, Mike, you're a former council member, uh, so we can throw lots of stones at the current council. I mean, you guys did it perfectly, I'm sure. Inevitably. Um, you know, it just seems like this council endlessly talks about, you know, the need to improve transportation. We're going to do bus rapid transit. We're going to do all this plans. But the one thing they don't want is they don't seem to want to expand I-270 to, to allow additional, additional cars on I-270. Are they too concerned about saving the planet and hating <laughs> automobiles? Well, I mean, the, the reality is, is, is a couple things. First, rarely does the county council, the county doesn't generally fund interstates. So, so the fact that, so, so it creates an interesting dynamic, right? So the county passes plans on what we hope others will pay for or not pay for. And so that becomes a really interesting dynamic. And so what, what they're really setting up is uh, a negotiating stage, right? Here, here's what we want to see done with somebody else's money. And so they're trying to kind of put those parameters in there so that they know that they can say, here's where we want to see things happen or not happen, which unfortunately then allows them the flexibility to come up with stuff that is really not particularly realistic because most people, if you're going to actually fund transportation, recognize you're going to have to fund some combination of roads and transit to ultimately make this thing work. And so they end up going so far in one direction that it almost makes it unpalatable for whoever the funding entity, the governor or whomever, to come back and then say, oh, well, let's negotiate over that because you're already in such a crazy position. Well, I mean, Mark, I mean, Mike, you know, the, the, the governor did have a proposal mm -hmm. for widening the bridge right, right. and I-270 and other parts of the Beltway, and the council opposed it ver vociferously, and there, yes. was, there was money to pay for it. Yep. No, it did. And, it, and, it, and it's exceedingly frustrating. And I think that th this becomes a challenge and it goes back to our debate about Thrive 2050 and those things. We are a urbanizing community, but we're not an urban community. We are still a suburban community. And so the challenge is we don't have a central hub to move people around. And so we still have to move people in roads and everyone's not going in the same direction all the time. And so we've got to have a solution that is a mixed solution. And yet from a political perspective, from a progressive notion, and I hate to use that because I think it makes progressive sound bad, but the reality is that we want to be able to make a good political statement. We don't necessarily want to solve the problem. The, the reality is, is Mike, I, I think is reflecting is, is that uh, we are a automobile dependent county uh, not to say that Ride On and, and the Metro don't have a, a role, but we don't have the density for it to be the dominant solution the way it may be in a, in a Manhattan or a New York City in general. Um, so to be able to include more people to get them home and to get them to where they want to go on time, uh, we need more highways. Well, that's a that's a great sentiment, Mark. But <laughs> but the, but the the fact is that the, you know not only this council but the council that right. preceded it yeah. voted nine to nothing against against you know uh, transportation plans. I mean it, it, that was put put forth by the the council of governments, which was a regional council. I mean, at some point the voters have to get tired of sitting in endless traffic, trying to get across the American Legion Bridge and, and merging into I-270 and then trying to get to Clarksburg. Clarksburg is in Montgomery County. It's not all drivers trying to get to Frederick. Well, and the re but the reality is also gonna be what's happened as a result of the pandemic. I mean, there were clearly trends where we were moving in a direction where you were seeing more transit utilization, you were seeing increased capacity. And what you've seen now is a, clearly a huge step back because there is no set direction that everyone's going because you've got some people working from home, some people working in a hybrid fashion. And so to be able to try to then figure out development and transportation patterns, I think it's going to take you another decade for that to sort out again. And the one thing, Mike, you didn't mention hmm. is that people are afraid to be on buses and, and in mass transit because of the communi communicable diseases 
that we just saw being passed around during the pandemic. They wanted well, to be in their cars. And, well, I mean, and, people don't want to be on buses anyway. So, but anyway, go start, Mark. I, I was going to make the observation. I mean, that working from home has been a bigger source of, of displacement from the roads than mass transit has ever been. Uh, it, 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 is, it is a reality. It's also fascinating to see the role that Uber and, and Lyft are having as sort of a quasi, uh, an alternative to, tra to transportation. We're seeing real growth in those patterns. It's obviously automobile centered, uh, but it is also kind of changing the, the, the transportation mix that, uh, uh, that uh, people depend upon. Well, no, and I think that's a really good point, Mark, because what you're seeing, especially in younger generations, is they haven't been buying cars or wanting to own automobiles, but now they don't have to, but they don't have to rely on public transit to do it. And so it gives them a level of flexibility that didn't exist previously, and they're, and they're comfortable using it. So I think it will change the, 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 land, the travel patterns. Well, I hate to break it to, to you, Mike. I mean, as, as the, the millennial generation gets older and they start having families, they're going to start, they're going to start start demanding <laughs> suburban housing and they're going to want cars and vans and other ways to take their kids to school. It's not going to be, they're not going to all be waiting for the school bus at the corner and we have to wrap it up. But I, I just want to say what an awful tragedy it was for that poor student um, to uh, at Ashburton's uh, school to have been hit by a car and, and lost his life. That's just, you know, something that every parent just strikes daggers in your heart.